Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at Amazon's Fire Phone. So this is Amazon's first smartphone. This joins their tablets and the Amazon Fire TV for a complete hardware lineup directly from Amazon, which is pushing their services. This is running Android, but a heavily forked version called Fire OS 3.5. Again, very similar to the tablets. Now this is powered by a Snapdragon 800 processor clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, that's quad core. And then we have an Adreno 330 GPU. We also have two gigs of RAM. We come standard with 32 gigs of storage and 64 gigs is available. This does not have expandable storage, so pick the capacity you want when you buy the phone. Now this also has a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera and a 2.1 megapixel front-facing camera. Now talking about that display, 4.7 inches, 720p, that's good for 312 pixels per inch. Now Amazon says this is one of the brightest screens out there with 590 nits, so we're gonna have to take a look at that. So not a really high resolution display, but it sounds like quality is pretty good. Now the Fire Phone has two standout features, dynamic perspective, which is part of their 3D interface. It actually has a bunch of cameras on the front of the phone which tracks your face and it uses gyroscopes and other sensors to track motion. So it's able to generate a 3D interface using those features and we're going to demonstrate that in this video. And then we have Firefly which is Amazon's platform for searching for items using photographs or sound. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, of course, Amazon does sell some case accessories, including this natural leather case, which is kind of a hard shell case. So we're gonna explore that briefly in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Just have to push this through here. You can see we have this little sleeve. You can see it's got that red and black coloring, kind of nice. All right, so we have our box here. We should have a little tab here to cut. All right, so let's just lift the lid here. So as you can see here, there we have our phone. You can see our fire branding on the inside of the box. So let's go ahead and pull up this tab here. So there is our foam, which is kind of a standard size, 4.7 inches, pretty standard here. We're gonna set that aside for just a moment so we can clear the content here. So we have some paperwork, which tells us a little bit about the buttons and ports and where we stick the cable. So as you can see here, it's available in English and Spanish, I think, yep. And then we have our accessories down below here. So inside we should have a micro USB charging cable. There we go, pretty standard stuff. And then we have a compartment which should contain some other accessories, which includes a set of tangle-free earphones. And we also have our power adapter, which is included here. So there we go, our Amazon branded travel charger, which is quite nice here. As you can see it's matte finish on the top, glossy finish on the side, and our folding prongs, pretty nice. And of course you have your USB port on the side here. And then we have our Tangle Free headphones with this little tab here to pull. There we go, let's pull these out. Push these through. So there you go, you have that Tangle Free flat cable, sometimes called a spaghetti cable. This does include a remote control and microphone, so you can see your volume up, volume down, and our select button in the center. We also have our headphones, and these are in-ear headphones. You can see they're kind of similar in design to Apple's EarPods, uh, and they are magnetic, so they fasten to each other magnetically. In fact, if you look closely at them, you can see that the left and right indicators are actually convex and concave, so they fit together nicely. All right, so let's get to the phone itself. We're wrapped in plastic here. Just gonna pull this tab. Just slide right out, hopefully, or not. There we go. First impression right away is that this looks a lot like a Nexus 4 or maybe even the iPhone 4 with that glass back panel. This is Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and back. So it's pretty scratch resistant, pretty shatter resistant. So it's a little more durable than you would think. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this phone up for the first time. As you can see, it's quite reflective. Tap and hold the power button at the top and then we'll do a complete hardware tour and explore all the features. You can see our boot animation, which is kind of nice. So this is powered by an Adreno 330 processor, which is being put to good use here with all the 3D animation. All right, so we only have two language options here, so we're gonna select English, click Next. Uh, we're gonna skip this for now. I'm gonna install the SIM card later. We're gonna select our time zone because I do not have a SIM card installed yet. There we go. And then we have to connect to Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna log into my local Wi-Fi network. Now, very similar to the Kindle, this phone has already been set up for my account. So I didn't have to log into my Amazon account. It's just asking me if I am this person. So we're gonna click next and we're gonna enable location services, enable backup features, and we can sign into our social networks. I'm gonna skip that for now. And then we're gonna go through a little tutorial here. So we're gonna start. So as you can see here, we have this little tutorial which explores some of the features, including dynamic perspective. So we can click next. 
Fire Phone has three primary screens. A center screen, a left panel, and a right panel. All right, so let's take a look at the design of the Fire Phone. So this is a 4.7 inch LCD display, which again is very bright, 590 nits. So you can swipe up here to unlock the device and we'll explore the interface in just a bit. As you can see here, we have a home button. Up top, we have our earpiece. Next to that is the 2.1 megapixel front facing camera. Now at all four corners of the phone, you'll find these low powered cameras, which are there to detect the presence of your face. And in fact, these work in conjunction with some mapping sensors. So if you look closely in the shadow of the bezel, you'll find these IR mapping sensors, which are there to map the presence of your face. The camera picks up the light and uh, changes the user interface accordingly. So it's kind of an interesting technology, but of course it does add quite a bit of clutter, visual clutter to the front of the phone. Now toward the bottom you find the slightly raised home button, and that's the only button you'll find here. No off-screen Android light controls, just a simple home button. Now on the left hand side you have your volume rocker, as well as your dedicated camera key and Firefly key, which I'll demonstrate when I look at the software. We also have our SIM tray. This is a nano SIM. It does include a AT&T SIM when you buy this device because again this is an AT&T exclusive. Now at the top of the phone you find your sleep wake power button along with one of the stereo speakers. So this does give you stereo in landscape orientation. And then we have our headphone jack. Now at the bottom we'll find our micro USB 2.0 charging and data syncing port along with our microphone which is right here, the mouthpiece, and the other stereo speaker. And we also have our screws here to fasten it together. Now around the edge of the phone you'll find this soft touch rubber material which adds to the grippability of the phone and gives some shock and impact protection to the edge of the phone to protect the glass. And again, as you can see here, we have this nice glass panel on the back, which looks pretty sharp. You have your Amazon logo emblazoned in the center. Up top, you have an LED flash. It's a single LED flash with your 13 megapixel camera, which does support optical image stabilization. So optical image stabilization is built in, but it doesn't support 4K video recording, just 1080p. We also have our microphone right next to it. Now, just to give you some idea of the size comparison between the other popular 4.7 inch phone or the soon to be popular 4.7 inch iPhone 6, you can see that they're fairly similar in size. They got the same overall footprint, they have the same 4.7 inch screen, but the iPhone 6 is indeed much thinner and it's made out of metal versus glass and rubber. But again, very interesting designs overall. All right, so let's go and take a look at the user interface. And the first thing you see on the lock screen is the 3D animated wallpaper or dynamic perspective wallpaper, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of neat. It's tracking the orientation based on my face. So as I move it around, it see it's basically giving me the impression that I'm looking through the phone into the scene. So it's kind of nice. And these are changeable. There's quite a variety of them to pick from and I'll explore that in a bit. But you can swipe down to get to your drop down notification shape. So you can see your notifications just like you would on an Android. You can swipe down to expand them and you can swipe to dismiss them or access them. You can see we also have these quick setting toggles up here. So we have a flashlight, which is very handy, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and airplane mode. So not a whole lot up here. You can also see access to syncing. So you can sync your phone. You can jump to your settings. You can jump to Mayday or you can jump to search. Now, if you go to search, takes you to a search, which is platform, it searches the entire device or searches the web. So for example, if I wanna search Amazon, so I can see my stuff and I can see the web or I can see the store. So you can see search is just a drop away. Now Mayday is a feature that basically gives you a live assistant. They can't see you, but you can see them and they talk to you. So if you have a question, they can control your phone and that sort of thing. It's a really neat feature that's also available on their tablets. Now to unlock, we just swipe up. It takes us to this home screen, which consists of Amazon's familiar carousel design. So anything you've recently accessed will appear first. And again, it's all chronological. So you just swipe through them. Now that 3D dynamic perspective effect is used across everything. So you can see it on the home screen here with these icons, so the icons are dimensional. You can also swipe up to get to your app drawer. So you can see the dock up here. This allows you to edit the dock. So for example, if you want to change one of the icons up here, just drag and drop it. Now you have to have four icons up here, so it will automatically replace one with the other. So you pretty much have to drag and drop what you want up here to replace what you don't want. And I think one of the most interesting aspects to this user interface design is the fact that they kind of act like live widgets. So you can see all of your information below it. So you can see all your messages under messaging. You can see, well, you can see some albums that are available to purchase under music, or you can see your existing albums. You can see your magazines, that sort of thing. So you just tap on them, it wakes up the app and takes you to wherever you want to go. In this case, it's taking me to the newsstand to buy additional uh, issues. 
Now to go back, you swipe up. So the back gesture is actually a swipe up gesture. Now this dynamic perspective effect is used in a variety of ways, not just for animating objects. So for example, when you pitch the phone to the left, you can see it wakes up some of your information up here. So you can see the clock, you can see the battery, wireless status, that sort of thing. So again, you move it off to the left here, it wakes all that information up. Otherwise it gives you a full cleaner looking display. Now you can disable this. So if you always want to see that information available, instead of always having to use that sort of gesture to wake it up, you can. Now, if you go into, for example, the photo gallery here, let me zoom out here. If you pitch the phone again to the left or right, you can see it wakes up some information. So I can see the duration of this video up here. I can also see the date of those albums. So again, if I move it towards center, all that information goes away, move it off to the left, wakes up. Now you can swipe in from the left to get to the left column. In this case on the home screen, it takes you to popular features such as your app store, games, web, music, web is the browser, music, videos, photos, books, newsstand, audiobooks, docs, shop, and Amazon Prime. So for example, this takes you to the app store. You can also swipe in from the right edge to get to more information. Now this is all contextually based. So for example, on the home screen, I get my weather and today's events and other information here. I can also use a flick gesture to hide this or activate it. So for example, if I wanna hide this, just flick it to the right. If I wanna bring it up, flick it to the left, hide it again. And to bring up the left column, just do the same gesture. Now this column idea can be used in a variety of ways. So for example, when you're in the messaging or email app, if you swipe to the right here, you get to the option to add photographs. So for example, if you wanna add a photograph to a message and send it, it's pretty easy to do so in this case. So essentially these are your option panels on the right hand and left hand side. Now what you don't have here, unfortunately, is recent apps. So there is no recent apps launcher on the Fire Phone. Instead, you just basically have to find the app by going to the carousel and selecting it. And since they're in chronological order, perhaps it's not as important that uh, you don't have recent apps launched here. Now the app store also displays what's on cloud or what's on device. So I can see what I have previously purchased from the Amazon App Store. You can see that a lot of these were purchased on my Kindles and I can transfer them to my device by just selecting them. Now from this carousel, if I tap and hold on one of these items, I have the option to remove from the carousel or remove from the device. So let's go ahead and remove from the device and that will uninstall it. And again, if I wanna re-access it, just go to cloud and select AccuWeather and it will download it for me again and reinstall it on my device. Now, if you press and hold the home button, it actually gets you to a voice assistant. What's the weather like today? Sorry, I can't do that yet. So as you can see here, this is a very limited voice assistant. It's not like Google Now. It's not like uh, Siri. It's actually very similar to voice control, but even more limited than that. You can make calls, you can send messages, you can send emails or search the web. So I can say, Search the web for Amazon. Let me get that for you. Now the interesting thing here is that the default search engine is Bing. There is not a choice to select Google. So Bing is the only search option available for Silk. Now we have another gesture to look at here and that is scrolling. So again, it's using dynamic perspective to aid in scrolling. So all I have to do is move the device up and down so you can start scrolling through it. Kind of in a natural way, you can see it doesn't go crazy when you pitch the device. It's pretty well controlled here. So I actually like it. You have a lot of variability in terms of how fast you want it to scroll. It works kind of nice, but I have found that uh, sometimes it activates when I don't want it to. So it'd be kind of nice to have a quick toggle to stop this feature. So for example, when you're laying in the bed and you put the device down to move or something, it automatically starts scrolling and you lose your place. So that is the drawback of this feature. Now, if you press the volume button, you get to your volume control. So for example, you have your slider here, or you can go to vibrate, silent, or just silent for three hours or turn your ringer back on. Now, perhaps the biggest feature here is Firefly. So as you can see here, when I bring up the Firefly icon on the carousel, you can see my previous searches right below it. And if I tap and hold the camera button along the side, it also activates Firefly. So Firefly can do a number of things. It can scan for music, it can scan for TVs or movies, or it can scan for physical objects, barcodes, QR codes, and that sort of thing. So if I activate the Firefly feature, the camera automatically activates and starts searching for objects that it can recognize. So for example, I have this Galaxy Tab S, and in order for it to recognize, I actually have to wake up the screen here. 
And that's because it's searching the Amazon store using its existing library of photographs. So down here you can see that it's found it. In fact, I can swipe up here to see my previous history, but I can tap on the item here. I can see that it's available on Amazon, so I can go ahead and tap on it. It takes me exactly to the right model, Tab S 8.4 inch, 16 gig, and that sort of thing. So I can buy it right from the store. Now we can also search barcodes from packages. So for example, this SD card here, automatically finds the barcode, highlights it, takes me to the exact item that I'm looking for here, and I can go right to Amazon to buy it. Of course, it also works great with media such as books and DVDs here. And it finds it right away down here. But you can see it's available in the video store. I can shop on Amazon. I can look it up via IMDB because uh, Amazon does own that property. And I can share it. I can view the original photo, send feedback, or delete it from the history. So I can go to Shop Amazon to find that exact item. Now, admittedly, it's not always reliable. It took me a while to find examples that would actually work. So, for example, with this tablet here, if I just look at the back here, Samsung Galaxy Tab S back, you can see it doesn't recognize it at all. It keeps searching, keeps scanning. You can see those little animations around the uh, tablet and it's not finding it. At some point it will tell me that it can't find the item. So I actually had to flip it around, wake up the display, and because it has this image in its uh, library of items, it actually found it. Now Firefly can also identify text such as websites, phone numbers, and email addresses. So for example, I have this website down here printed on a uh, spec sheet I'm using to refer to in this review. So all I have to do to bring it up on my phone is allow Firefly to find it. So as you can see, it's highlighted it. And down here, it's given me the option to open it. So I can go ahead and open it in the Silk browser and it launches the website for me. Now Firefly is a platform, so apps can take advantage of it. In fact, you can browse apps that can take advantage of it. So for example, you see iHeartRadio, Flickster, Calorie Counter, StubHub, and Trove News. Now you can plug your Google account into this device. So for example, when you add your email account, you have the option to sync your calendar. So for example, we can go to My Accounts, we can go to Manage Email Accounts, so you can see here, I've already added three email accounts, including two of my Gmail accounts. So if I go to this here, you can see I can sync my calendar and my contacts. And so that means that I have my Google Calendar and my contacts already loaded on my phone, which is very handy. So in the email client, I can pull to refresh. I can swipe in from the right to see my various inboxes. I can also swipe from the right edge to see my attached documents. I also have all my contacts here, so I can see all my contacts that have been synced from Google, and you can also search them as well. Under the calendar, Again, very familiar interface here, so you can tap on a day to see the event. You can also see the calendar view or the list view, like so. And again, this all syncs to your Google account if you prefer. Now, I also have Maps, which is using Here Maps instead of Bing or Google Maps. And this is pretty familiar stuff. I mean, you have traffic and navigation, satellite. Uh, you have various options. You can add bookmarks or locations that you want. You can search for locations to navigate to. So, for example, if I want to do Apple Store, I can search Apple Store on Big Beaver Road in Troy. I can select this for navigation. So I'll use my current location. I can get directions here. Now I also have a weather app so you can see your current location and conditions, including the timeline. You can swipe in from the edge to see your future forecasts and swipe in from the left edge to add additional locations. You also have instant video. So once again, this does come with one year of Amazon Prime free with the purchase of this device. So you do have Amazon instant video. So for example, it sees my TV shows. It sees HBO on Prime instant video recently added to TV Prime. So you can see lots of things that you can download. I'm just going to go with, let's go with this one here. So you can see I started watching an episode here. I can click resume. Now, if you have a Miracast equipped device like a Samsung Smart TV, you can wirelessly broadcast this display onto that TV. As you can see here, it sees my Samsung device, which is offline right now. We also have the music player, which includes everything you've purchased from Amazon or anything you've stored on Amazon. So for example, you can select your album here. And of course, you can buy more stuff. Next up is the Kindle Book app. And as you can see here, I have my existing purchases. I can search or I can go right to the Amazon store to purchase more books. So you can see here that I have my pages. I can swipe through here. I can tap on the screen to adjust settings. So for example, I can change my backdrop here. So for example, I want sepia tone or if I want black background with white text, I can change the size of my text. I can also change the line spacing here from wider to narrower. I can change my fonts. 
Now, if you swipe in from the right edge, you'll get to X-Ray, which breaks down all the major subjects on this page. So you see all the major names, locations, and that sort of thing here. So for example, if you wanna tap on this item, it will show you exactly where Walt Mossberg appears in the book. You can see they're highlighted in blue, and you can scrub to those locations, or you can jump to them down here. So you can see what pages he's mentioned on, and that sort of thing, and parts of the text. You can also go up here to see the full Wikipedia article on Walt Mossberg, which is what appears in this synopsis up top. Now, this also integrates with audiobooks. So if you have a companion audiobook with this book, if you click play, and I think it's magical. it'll actually and start case, reading along uh, with you in the book. Job stared at the floor. Later, he told me that he was blown away by how honest and gracious Gates had just been. Now, I also have a note-taking app, so you can add a new note here, and you can just start typing in text, or you can use voice dictation. So this does this keyboard does include voice dictation. This is a test of voice dictation on the Amazon Fire Phone, period. All right, so let's take a look at the settings panel. As you can see here, you have all the major categories, which you can tap on to expand. You can also just search for items here, so you have a searchable settings panel, which is very useful. Now, if you go to Wi-Fi Networks, again, you can see it expands. You can see that we do have NFC technology in here, which you can toggle on and off. Uh, under display, we have a lot of useful settings here. So, for example, we can enable show status bar. So if you want the status bar to be persistent instead of always disappearing, you can enable that. Also under the display is configure low motion settings. This is where you turn off all those effects. So if you don't want that dynamic effect to work, you can disable them entirely with one switch or you can disable certain features. Now, one of the features here is peak. Now, peak is referring to the ability to tilt the device left or right to show additional information, such as the status bar or labels on icons and that sort of thing. So if you want to disable that, you can. Now, under lock screen, this is where you can change your lock screen scenes. And this shows you just how many there are. So you can go ahead and select any one of them. Let's go ahead and select this one. And then if we go to the lock screen now, you'll see that it has updated for that scene. There's quite a few of them. A lot of them are quite interesting here, as you can see. So they're nice. Um, and then you can also choose to have a rotating screen instead. So it will automatically cycle between all these scenes for you. Now you can select your own photograph here and it doesn't turn it into a 3D object, but it does move around as you move the phone. You also have battery and storage, so you can view your battery usage here. It's not as informative as I'd like to see, but as you can see, you can't tap to see your entire timeline or that sort of thing. In terms of battery life, it's not great. I think part of the fact is this display is ultra bright and it's using these infrared cameras uh, constantly to monitor for the presence of your face, so that does eat up some power. Now in terms of the phone dialer here, again, pretty familiar stuff. It does have that dynamic perspective effect as well with that drop shadow, but a very basic and friendly user interface. Now in terms of the camera app, again, you just tap the button along the side to activate it. You tap and hold to activate Firefly. So you can see you can switch between the, uh, the still camera and the video camera with this little toggle in the lower left corner. You can snap your photograph. You can tap anywhere on the scene to adjust exposure and focus. As you can see here, it does it pretty quickly. You can switch between the front facing and rear facing camera as well. Now the settings are pretty basic here. So in still camera, you have HDR or image review. You can toggle those on and off. And then you have two camera modes, lenticular, or panorama mode. Both of these will actually coach you on how to make, how to take those type of photographs. Now, when you're recording video, it does have optical image stabilization, which is always present. That means it doesn't have to crop the image in order to stabilize. It doesn't have to do it in software. It actually works very well. I'm actually pretty impressed by the results. I was outside taking video with my dogs and the results are pretty impressive. So anyway, getting back to the camera here as I'm recording, you can snap photographs while recording video and it does it silently. All right, guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with the front-facing camera of the Fire Phone. Again, 2.1 megapixels. Does a pretty decent job. You have a wide angle, but you don't have the distortion of most wide-angle lenses, so it doesn't make you look a little funny. So I'm pretty impressed overall. You can see it does have automatic exposure, so it will adjust the scene, but it doesn't get too crazy here. You can see I have a lot of brights in the scene here. It's not going too crazy. I do have tap to, fo uh, tap to change exposure. As you can see, I just tapped the light fixture and it exposed for the light fixture. So you do have tap to expose. Of course, there's no autofocusing here. But this should also give you an idea of the uh, uh, audio quality, the audio pickup, which is pretty decent here as well. Now let me quickly show you the leather case that Amazon sells for the Fire Phone here. So let's pop out this insert and snap in the phone. 
So as you can see, along the side, the buttons are exposed. Everything is completely open on the bottom, including the speaker and the microphone and the USB port. Along the top, everything is also open again for the headphone jack, the other speaker, and the sleep-wake button. Now you do not have a lay-on table design. It is completely flush to the glass. And on the back, you have this nice leather finish. This is actually genuine leather that's surrounded by plastic. So in conclusion, the Amazon Fire Phone does have a few pros and cons. In terms of pros, I think the biggest one is going to be that display. 590 nits makes for a very bright and vivid display. Again, LCD IPS, and it's fairly high resolution, although not 1080p like you've come to expect from a lot of smartphones today. You also have that great camera on the back, 13 megapixels with optical image stabilization, which does deliver excellent results, so it's a great camera phone in general. Now, there are quite a few things I like about the Amazon interface, like these side panels here, which give you additional information. I really like the carousel view because they kind of give you direct access to items from that app. So for example, if you go to the camera app, instead of launching the camera app and then looking for the gallery, you can see the gallery right below the camera app icon and you can quickly launch one of the photographs instead. So I think that's very novel. It also works with things like the Silk browser, messaging, that sort of thing. So I actually really like that sort of design. Now, what I don't like is that when you're swiping through the carousel, it's pretty easy to accidentally trigger one of these side panels instead. So that can get a little annoying. And then the drop down notification panel tends not to be as responsive as I'd like to see. And instead of having this nice drop down effect like you get, instead you get this fade in effect, which I find a little disconcerting. And I also like the fact that we have an app drawer without an app screen. So you don't have two places for apps. You have the carousel with all your recent apps, and then you have your app drawer. Now, unfortunately, you can't manage this as much as I'd like. I'd like to be able to folder items and that sort of thing, but you do have a pretty excellent search engine right from the drop down shade. Now, unfortunately, something I've run into a lot with this phone when it's in my pocket is accidentally triggering the raised home button. So I'm constantly hearing this ding sound coming from my pocket because it's activating the voice control or alternatively it's easy to accidentally hit this camera key along the side again if your phone is in the lock state if you just hit the key once it wakes up the camera so a lot of times I pull the phone out of my pocket and I see that my camera has been on the entire time so that has adversely affected my battery life experience so far with this phone. Now, ultimately, the Amazon Fire Phone is best suited to new smartphone customers because I think people who are already invested into an ecosystem like Google or Apple or Microsoft are not going to have use for the Amazon Fire Phone, which is pretty locked down to the Amazon ecosystem. So if you have Android apps that you're used to, if you are already plugged into Google services, you're pretty limited when you come over to the Amazon Phone. So for me, this isn't a terribly interesting phone. It's not something I'm going to be using day to day, but I think some people may find it useful, especially Amazon customers. So that's going to do it for me in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.